We got Sawyer John McKenzie custom sawing some pine logs for us with his LT40 wood miser today. We're going to talk about the crucial steps you need to take before getting your logs milled, all while learning some essential LT40 sawmill tips and tricks along the way as we tackle a giant white pine log that is rotting from the inside out. How deep does the rot go? Is it even worth sawing? Let's find out. Well, how long have you four, been sawing? Four years I've been sawing with the bandsaw mill. I had an older model and then I upgraded to the hydraulic mill. I asked a lot of questions. I actually watched some YouTube videos and Kendall here at KNG Lumber, he's uh, very knowledgeable and I've learned a lot of things from him. If you go to someone that's been doing it and they can show you in five minutes or a couple minutes, you can ask them a question and take you a whole day of sawing to figure it out on your own. So what are you doing here? Cleaning off the dirt. Band saws cut dirt, or uh, cut wood, not dirt. You just tear the blade up right away. So this log was setting in the dirt. So if I just take a couple minutes here, it takes less time to clean it off than it does to change a blade. There's dirt on the end of the log. If the blade enters, it dulls the blade right away. There's more tips to help you save your blades. You want to use the least amount of water. It's just to clear the pine pitch off the blade. It's kind of a lubricant is what it is, just to keep the blade clean. I used to use too much water, so there was a lot more sawdust in there. Every time you saw, pay attention. You'll learn something new. It'll help you get better at it. When the blades get dull, do they get do they wait they get wavy? They don't cut straight or flat? Well, on these logs they had great big knots. Tent and these logs have been sitting around for a while. So they dry out. I don't know if you ever cut firewood, but if you don't split it, it doesn't dry out very well. But as soon as you split it, it begins to dry. Same with the log. You know, cut it open, it can actually begin to dry. Mm, okay. So uh, those knots, you know, they're sticking out at the end of the log. They dry, they're hard, there's pine pitch in them. So when you're cutting, if there's no knots, it cuts really well. And then as I get to some of the bigger knots, I slow down to let that blade do the work it needs to do so you get a nice cut. Once we started getting into that second log, it's started to produce some, some really colorful lumber. Part of it is it has its own look no matter how you cut it because it's wood. It's, you know, like wood, it, the imperfections is, you know, gives it the character that makes it look so nice. So if you can draw those out. <clears throat> Lots of lumber out of logs. If they're straight and clean, you get a lot more out of them than if they're crooked. Okay. Especially if you're hiring somebody to cut for you because it takes time to make a square can. There's benefits to picking good quality logs. You know, if you're cutting a tree down or something, a good log is worth a lot. Whereas yep. branches and all that, it really takes away from what you're getting. You know, keeping the log off the ground, cutting above the crotch, and cleaning the branches as close to the log as you possibly can. That way, it saves him time, and when he saves time, you save money. Or someone who's buying my service that would help you out, so you're not paying so much extra money to get what you want. Yep. That is absolute golden information there. <laughs> One of my main questions I ask him is how long has it been sitting on the ground? For? A lot of times, the best saw logs that you could possibly get is the ones that are fresh cut. You do not want to let these logs sit, especially on the ground, touching the ground, for long periods of time. The longer you let it sit after you cut it, the worse. So the best scenario is to wait to cut it until you know you're gonna get it sawn up into lumber. Your white pine, you can't leave that lay too long because through the summer, well, you get the blue staining and then you get the bugs get in there, the beetles get in there, and then you get the worms and they chew up the wood on the inside. So they really lose value after like the second year. Probably can't even use them. But some of your other woods, your oaks, stuff like that, they rot from the outside. They can sit a while, it's not as big a deal. Fresh logs are easier to cut. Basically, you know, if you have a log that looks like a banana, you gotta get it square so you can start making boards. So that does take time. If you have a more of an expensive log, like a walnut or a maple or a cherry, something like that, it's worth spending all the time on it. These logs are pretty good size logs, so banana shape, you have material cut off, you still got plenty left over. If you can't change the tree, you 
trying to get as much value out of it as you can. So uh, it just, it takes more time to do it. Those knots, you know, they're sticking out at the end of the log. They dry, they're hard, there's pine pitch in them. So when you're cutting, if there's no knots, it cuts really well. And then as I get to some of the bigger knots, I slow down to let that blade do the work it needs to do so you get a nice cut. Basically, when you're cutting your tree down, probably the point to be made is that, you know, if you get to the crotch in the tree, sometimes cut that crotch out of there and start above it and cut off before it if you can. Sometimes if you're looking for live edge, you want the crotch, but if you're going for uh, a saw log, you know, a round log that's straight is much easier to work with. For the sawyer, he can be more productive. He can get more boards per hour while he's sawing. Cleaning up your logs and having them, you know, the branches cut off and uh, keeping them clean, that helps a lot too. If you're taking them out of the woods, stack them on something so they're not setting on the dirt. Yeah. Little dirt can't be helped, but if you're dragging them through the dirt and you know dropping them in, it makes it a little more difficult to saw. So it just it'll save you money in the end because you'll be able to cut your logs faster. This is where you're going to cut off the end here so that you can avoid any dirt. Any dirt. Yeah, because yep. it's been sitting around a while. And then when they um, cut the tree down, they didn't cut the branches off tight. So when you're trying to roll around, it catches on everything. So I'll clip off some of the branches that are sticking out. This is cracked in, so this isn't going to make anything. Almost, the owner of this log isn't here, but I would actually suggest just cut it off here, because then we'll get a 16 by 16. You can't get a 16 by 16. As a matter of fact, I think I'm just going to cut it off, because it's cracked here. This would not get us the camp we want. So I think I'm done. I'm going to lock it off right there. All right. I almost just ran into this thing, man. That wouldn't have been fun. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is now day two, and as you can see, he's already started cutting that ginormous rotted out log here. We're gonna find out how much uh, lumber we can get out of that bad boy, and we'll keep you updated. Quite an angle there, but as it goes down the log, it's more perpendicular to the face, so I might just do that. There you go. So then uh, that would get him one there, and maybe I'll get one off the bottom here. What the customer wanted after we called him on the phone was just get the most out of it you can. You know, use your judgment and, and do the best you can with it. So he wanted to get some material out of it. And he did talk about getting live edge if we could. So I tried getting one piece of live edge just above the rock, but I should have been up like another inch higher. The top side of the live edge piece is good, but that bottom right at the rock is a little more rot than I wanted on there. But. On here, I was working my way down because I made a two and a half inch live edge piece because you want the live edge closer to the center of the log. I was hoping that I wouldn't have got quite so much rot so the center of that would only have a little bit of it. In sawmilling, flitches refer to on edge slabs of wood that are cut from a log. They still have the bark on the edges and need further processing to become usable lumber that is close to square. Flitches are often used for making veneers or can be further sawn into planks or boards of average sizes. There's how much was rotten. All but the top, about two feet or so. Oh, wow. I don't know, it's quite funky out here really to make live edge. It's not like, I'll give them one. I think the rest just make boards out of it. It's not, it's hardly not worth it. Not getting, no. I'll at least leave this one like that. She can fill it with a yep, boxy yep, if you we'll need. Give him one, but I don't think it's worth doing the rest that way. It's better off to make boards out of it. Did you manage it? You got it. In golf, a hole in one is good. A log? <laughs> Not so. top off, 
two boards in the bottom, and that's it. Is it even worth it? All right, let's can it. it we don't shouldn't have any more touched time. it in the first place. Yeah, so I don't even waste any more time with that. Yep. So it's a, it's a miracle that we got the lumber that we did out of it. It's some beautiful, colorful pine, though. When it dries, there's not a lot of value in it, though. Because, yes, it's colorful here. It's so soft. No, I'm talking more... Here, like, yeah. this is okay. This is okay in here. That's solid all the way there. Yeah, yeah. This is funky on the edge up to about there. Yeah, that'll so. probably be trimmed off as well. There's a little bee's nest in there. I thought there was nine. There still might be, but I'm pretty sure we got eight out of them. Eight beautiful 16 by 16 cans, which I'll probably be showing you right now. The customer is here to pick up the lumber, but we got all this other lumber in the way, and that's his final lumber right there. So now we got to move all of that stuff to get it out of the way to be able to get to the lumber in the first place. Kendall is right now loading up the beams, 16 by sixes. I didn't know that. I thought it was ready. It's not, sure. ready. It's not ready. It's ready. Well, make sure. You saw. You were back here. You counted it. Is it ready to go on the trailer then? That trouble for selling wood, huh? Yeah. Man, you can't do anything right. Around. You want to learn some more sawmill knowledge? This video right here talks about our sawing process on one of the most unique and efficient mills in the industry. We cut into a giant red oak log while discovering something even more unique inside. Is it a hive of bees? Is it a time capsule from a bygone era? You're just going to have to click to find out. See you there.